All right, we're gonna see which van is stronger. We've got a gas transit and we've got our e-transit and we're gonna see which one's more powerful by having them do a tug of war. Now the only difference between these two vans is one is an extended length and one is a standard length. That's the only difference between the two. We're gonna get in, we'll roll some windows down. We've got Spencer here that's gonna be our judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah, I'll let you know when something breaks. I bet I make less noise than he does. Oh, he's revving it up. <laughs> I gotta stay back. I don't wanna get, a, I don't wanna lose an eye. One, two, three. Oh, he's got me! He's got me! <laughs> <laughs> Take them home. All right, let's do it again. All right, stop. Tell him, tell him, let me drag him back. Oh, he's, he's trying to burn out. <laughs> I'm trying to pull you some more. <laughs> he's still he said, trying. Let him drag you back over there, and then you're going to try again. Probably has a little more traction with the longer van, I bet more weight at the back. One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> oh, you had tires spinning the whole time. You know, something we learned yesterday is when you put it in reverse, it'll only back up at a max of five miles an hour. You can floor it in reverse and you will never go faster than five miles an hour. It's kind of funny. <laughs> she, she just shows up, right? All right, well, back up a little bit. I'll get us unhooked. Oh man, there went the transmission. Look at the hole we dug in the parking lot. Fail for the e-transit. It do not tow a gas transit. In fact, it's the other way around. All right, so we just got our tails whipped in a tug of war contest. And to be honest with you, I almost halfway expected it. I knew we were probably heavier than the other transit, but I was a little suspicious because one of the things we've noticed after having this thing for a little over 3,000 miles, it does not want to feed in all the power that it has available at the low speeds. Well, at a tug of war contest, you're starting off at zero to one miles an hour. That's not very much. I was suspicious that it might be the case, and that exactly ended up being what happened. Let's dive in a little bit here and show you exactly how much power it's willing to give it at low speeds. And then we're gonna take it out on the streets and show you about where the speedometer lands as it's starting to feed in more power. I wanna explain real quick why we lost the tug of war contest. One of the features of the E-Transit is that it does not give you full torque in full power at low speeds. I think they do this on purpose because in the real world, you're not playing tug of war. In the real world, you're driving around with a bunch of product in the back. And when you're doing that, you don't wanna be throwing all that product off the shelves. So right now I've got it in drive, I've got my foot on the brake and I'm gonna floor it. And what you're gonna see is over here on the left, you're gonna see the power meter only move about 5%. Right there, I've got it floored, and we're like three to 5% power, and it's because we're going zero miles an hour. And so what happens, that power meter slowly climbs as you increase in speed, and I don't know exactly what speed it is that it's willing to give it full power, but it will only give it full power after you've hit a certain speed, maybe 20, maybe 30 miles an hour. Unlike a lot of other EVs where they talk about, you know, it's all torque, all at the bottom, right from the get-go, and they're really fast, the E-Transit was designed to be functional, not necessarily fast. That's why you're, you're gonna see it struggle in areas like, like we just saw it struggle there. I've got it in eco mode right now, I'm gonna change 
change it real quick to normal mode. And I'm gonna actually turn on L mode. So you saw the eco thing come off on the dash. Now I've got it in L mode, which you can see on the bottom of your screen. It went from D to L. We're gonna do the same thing again. I've got my foot on the brake. I'm gonna floor it. And you see it doesn't change anything. That is not changing any amount of power we get down low. Now we'll jump out on some city streets and I'm gonna show you how it feeds in the power as you increase in speed. All right, so here we are. We're on a back road, so we can do this a little bit safer. But I'm gonna floor it, and what I want you to notice is watch the power gauge and the amount of time that it takes the power gauge to go to 100% power in relation to where we are on the speed. It does not give 100% power right away. Again, I'm gonna hold the brakes right now and floor it, and you see that it only gives it like 5% power. You see that needle move ever so slightly. So now we're gonna let off the brakes and floor it, and you're gonna see that we don't get full power down low. Boom. So we didn't get full power until 40 miles an hour. Here we are going 25 miles an hour, and I'm gonna punch it and floor it again, and you will not see the power meter go spike to 100. It does not hit 100% power until 40 miles an hour. So, as you can see, that feature, it actually makes it really cool to have for a delivery vehicle and for a service vehicle, but it's not gonna let you win a tug of war contest. Chalk one up for the gas vehicle there. They, they can one up us on a tug of war contest because we just don't have the power down low. Hope you had fun with this. If you liked what you saw, if you enjoyed it, if you wanna see more fun stuff like this as we put our e-transit through any pace that we can think of, if you have ideas that you want us to do with the e-transit, throw them in the comments below. Do us a favor and throw a thumbs up or a like on this video uh, and subscribe to the channel uh, because we're planning on keeping, keeping these videos coming with, with as many fun things as we can think to do with this e-transit. Until next time, we will see you later.